Ladies and gentlemen, the month of June has come to an end. So it's time to do a wrap-up video. Ah yes, we love a good wrap-up video. So let's dive into it, shall we? The first book I read in the month of June was The Secret of Shambhala by James Redfield, which is a fiction novel, and it follows one man's journey through Tibet to find this secret place called Shambhala, where a group of people are living in what the author calls a new spiritual awakening. We also discover all these different ways that people use their energies in order to coexist with each other. This book was a very interesting read, and I read it in about a day. It's got some interesting concepts concepts about how we live today and how we could be living if we all embraced this sort of spiritual awakening that the author is describing. I gave this book a 3 out of 5 stars on Goodreads and down below in the description you'll find my full review of it. The second book that I read in June was Star Wars The Imperial Handbook. As a massive Star Wars fan myself, this book was a really really interesting read. It tells you how the Empire essentially operates and everything that goes on behind the scenes and it actually gave me a much broader sense and broader knowledge of the Star Wars films as a whole because you find out things in this book that are never mentioned in the films or any of the subsequent TV shows. I highly recommend this for anyone who's into Star Wars and anyone who wants to know a bit of background knowledge about one of the biggest empires in Star Wars. I gave this one a 5 out of 5 stars and I'll also link my Goodreads review below. The third book that I read in June was an Aragon novella which is The Fork, The Witch and The Worm and I'm hoping this this is the first in a series of novellas that Christopher Paolini is going to be releasing. This was essentially kind of like a short story collection. We do follow Aragon and Sephira after the events of Inheritance and we do meet some characters which we have loved from the previous books as well. I did really enjoy this one even though I only gave it a 3 out of 5 stars. The reason why my rating is a little bit lower than the other previous Aragon novels is about halfway through Aragon sits down around a campfire and he gets told this story by one of the people that he's sitting with. And this story goes on and on and on and on and on and on. And it does kind of drag a little bit because I'm not reading about Aragon, I'm reading a story about a character that I have never met before and it's just being told through the eyes of this person telling the story around the campfire. It is still an interesting story, but I would have preferred if we could have a bit more information about Aragorn and Sephira's life after the events of Inheritance, but I still highly recommend this for anyone who is an Aragorn fan or just a Christopher Paolini fan in general, because he does have a new novel coming out soon and I believe it's called To Sleep in a Sea of Stars. The fourth book I read in June, which is probably one of my all-time favourites at the moment, would be The World of Ice and Fire by George R.R. R. Martin. This book very much makes up for the disaster that was the last season of Game of Thrones. What you learn in this book is you learn the history of Westeros way before the show even starts. So you get Aegon the Conqueror's story, how his sisters came over, conquered the Seven Kingdoms and united them all under the Iron Throne essentially. It gives you a bit of background on Dawn as well because I believe in the series that Dawn wasn't explored as much as it could have been, but this book definitely does explore it. So if you want to know more about Dawn or anything to do with Westeros, highly recommend it. It also takes you across the Narrow Sea to Essos and gives you loads of information about how the free cities of Essos were established, the different wars that they themselves have gone through, and a little bit of information about lesser places that have been mentioned in the show but were never fully explored. So for example, towards the end of the book, it gives you the history of A Shy by the Shadow and it tells you little bits about that particular area of Essos and why it's called A Shy by the Shadow. It was a really, really good read, this one. I thoroughly enjoyed it. It was engaging, even though it's not necessarily like a novel or a story, it's more of like a history book, it was still a really, really good read. And I gave this one a five out of five stars. Next, we do have some honorable mentions and I'm calling them honorable mentions because I haven't actually finished them yet, but I did start them in the month of June. And the first one of those would be The Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon. This was part of my June TBR but towards the end of June I actually went back to work and I've started working like 45 hours a week now so it's been a bit difficult to get through this one while I've been working so much. However, despite not finishing this book yet, I am absolutely in 
love with it and Samantha Shannon is slowly crawling her way to the top of my favourite authors list of all time. I've never read a book quite like this. The thing that made me want to read this book was the cover. I mean, it's got a dragon on it, I'm gonna read it obviously. This story has a female-female romance which I've just come into and I'm just here at the moment and I'm absolutely loving it. We've got dragons, hard magic rules, a complete history of this world that we are in and the world building in this book. Wow, I was quite shocked and blown away when I first started reading it just because of the way Samantha Shannon is constructing the world right from page one and the way she introduces all the different characters that we follow. So I am hoping to get this one finished soon because I'm just I'm just in love with it really and this is definitely going to make an appearance in a video that I do have planned which is five standalone novels that I would absolutely love to make screen adaptations for and this one is definitely on the top of that list. The second honourable mention I have is The Poppy War by R.F. Kwan. This book I actually started to do a buddy read with a very good friend of mine, Andrew Marche, who is also one of the actresses in the latest film that I've just done as well. So it's really nice that we have this working relationship of director to actress as well as we can buddy read books together. Andrew Marche actually suggested that we read this one and I'm very very glad that she did. If you have any knowledge of the Yellow Emperor from Chinese mythology, this book very much plays on that mythology and kind of turns it into a real thing. I haven't been enjoying it as much as I thought I would and I think that's mainly because I don't actually like any of the characters in this book but I do find the story really really interesting and the world itself is really interesting because I haven't come across a book quite like this before. I know that this is also the first in a series, there's two more to come out which I think The Dragon Republic is the second one and I'm not sure what the third one is and I will probably be buddy reading the second and third ones with Andrew Mahe as well. This month I also managed to get some manga read as well which I've been loving because it's been too long since I actually read some manga and the manga that I started with was Assassination Classroom. Assassination Classroom is one of my favourite anime series of all time and I was really looking forward to starting the manga series so I had to get hold of the manga books and start reading them and I'm absolutely loving it. Also the covers are really interesting so this is volume one which I read, volume two with this lovely little stripy cover volume 3 which has this wonderful vibrant pink cover as well. I've noticed that the anime series does follow the manga very very well. There are small little stories in the manga that aren't in the anime but I can see why they weren't there. So what's been really interesting about reading the manga is coming across these little stories and these little instances which I didn't know previously because I have watched the whole anime and now I can go back and relive the story with these characters that I absolutely adore in page format. I also managed to read Fairy Tale S Volume 1 and I don't have Volume 2 or Volume 3. I'm not sure if they're out yet or not. If you know anything about the Fairy Tale S series, do let me know down below. There is an anime for this manga and it's the Fairy Tale OVAs. So this volume is essentially a collection of short stories. I will also quickly mention that on the very, very last day of June, I started my first ever audiobook, which was The Magician's Nephew by C.S. Lewis. The Magician's Nephew is a book that I have read previously but I read it years and years ago in my childhood and I actually read it with my mum so this book has a very very special place in my heart as it was kind of the first fantasy book that I fell in love with as a child and that subsequently sparked me reading the rest of the Narnia series although I never finished the series so what I'm planning to do is I'm gonna finish the whole Narnia series on audiobook because yeah I'm really enjoying this audiobook so far. I never thought that I would enjoy audiobooks because I was always one of those people that was very much like audiobooks aren't real reading because you're listening to them not reading. This audiobook has completely changed my mind. I downloaded Audible to do it and thank god I got like two free credits so I can get The Magician's Nephew and the first Narnia book as well. And that's it ladies and gentlemen. Those were all the books that I read slash started in the month of June. Stay safe everybody and I will catch you in my next one. Bye!